the session sir uh, we can start yes sir just start a very good afternoon to all the participants and speaker i sachin dhariwal assistant professor dtu welcome you all to this day 4 second session of this short term training program on emerging nanoscale devices circuits and its applications for this session we have dr ankush bag with us he will deliver a talk on the topic engineering di gallium trioxide based nanostructures and thin film for high performance deep uv photodetectors before i invite dr ankush bag for the talk let me give a brief introduction of him dr ankush bag is presently working as assistant professor at iit mandi since 2016 he completed his phd from iit kharagpur in 2016 on gallium nitride devices including epitaxial growth fabrication and characterization of gallium nitride high electron mobility transistors presently his area of research interest are ultra wideband semiconductors such as di gallium trioxide for high power as well as opto electronics applications now i would like to invite dr ankush bag for the talk sir thank you so much for accepting the invitation for this short term training program now dr ankush bag will deliver his talk over to you sir okay so good afternoon everyone uh, am i audible to all of you yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. yeah okay so uh, dr sachin and uh, uh, others from dtu so thank you for your kind inv invitation and it's uh, my pleasure to present my research uh, in front of you so before i start uh, let me share my presentation so yeah. so can you just confirm uh, is my presentation visible to all of you my yes sir it is visible yes sir okay 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 i think uh, just uh, let me go to next few slide uh, these slides are moving perfectly at your end yes yes sir we can see the transitions here okay sure. okay so thank you once again so today uh, uh, so basically we work on uh, ultra wide band gap semiconductors so uh, if i just quickly introduce the topic so you know this uh, typically the semiconductor uh, we are familiar with is like semiconductor material is uh, silicon so which has a band gap uh, that means the energy which uh, requires to take one electron from the valence band to conduction band it is around 1.1 electron volt at room temperature so um, the materials which has more band gap than this uh, 1.1 or this conventional semiconductor has so that is called wide band gap semiconductor and the ultra wide band gap semiconductors are uh, semiconductor which has a very high band gap so uh, if i give the example so anyway i'll uh, discuss in detail also like this gallium oxide it has a, uh, a band gap of 4.9 electron volt so now you can imagine it is almost uh, four times than our uh, silicon so that is why this is called ultra wide band gap semiconductors now coming to uh, our uh, research uh, interest so we work both on electronic application as well as opto electronic application so in case of uh, electronic application we mostly uh, trying to fabricate the unipolar uh, power devices and in case of opto electronics uh, our primary focus is on photo detectors so basically these are all detectors which uh, detects light uh, or uh, the uh, light or electromagnetic spectrum at uh, um, deep uv uh, region so so this is all about this uh, research uh, topic today and then um, just uh, if i take uh, some quick moment to introduce our research group so we are relatively very uh, new research group and small uh, research group at iit mandi so uh, so uh, they are uh, anyway so the uh, work that i am going to present here today so it is all the 
uh, effort by the uh, students. So um, uh, this first one, uh, this from the back, Arnab uh, Asis, they are actually doing this uh, work on detectors. And uh, then Manoj and uh, Arpit, so they are mainly focusing on power uh, devices. So now um, we, uh, so just to introduce uh, our campus, so uh, we are literally uh, from uh, Valley of Himalayas. So uh, our uh, lab is, you can see like uh, this IIT Mandi have two campuses. So one is called North Campus and another one is uh, South Campus, just uh, uh, back to back of a uh, hill. So then uh, our lab and all the uh, ex research facilities are in South Campus. When we are like uh, presently I'm staying in North campus. So here we have a, a very small uh, facility, which we call like uh, our this very own lab. So apart from the um, uh, lab, uh, we have other few facilities like uh, centralized, sorry, centralized facilities like C4 DFED, where we uh, fabricate our devices. Uh, so we have this clean room uh, set up just recently inaugurated. Uh, so, and uh, along with that, we also have a advanced material research centers where we do a uh, lot of sophisticated characterization like if you same team or others thing. So, uh, so in case uh, if you are interested to um, use uh, or any uh, facility or if you are looking for any facilities, I will be very happy to uh, provide like if I can help you in your research or whatever way. So now this coming back to our uh, today's talk. So first, uh, let me define you what is a photo detector. So this photo detector, uh, first of all, this photo detector, uh, whatever I'll, uh, I'm, I'll focus here So or today. So it is made of solid state device. So photo detector can be uh, like of uh, different form. So uh, the, uh, the light uh, you can sense uh by using different equipments also so earlier before this uh, solid state devices so there uh, we used to have different type of photoreactors uh, so obviously due to the bulkiness as well as the inefficient op uh, operation of those uh, earlier equipments uh, so now people have moved to these solid state photoreactors so in case of solid state photoreactors uh, if we just see the basic structure of it so first we have this substrate, then some photosensitive material. And on so in this case, the photosensitive material is the gallium oxide, Ga2O3. So this gallium oxide that, uh, that uh, which has a band gap of 4.9 electron volt. So it can actually detect your electromagnetic spectrum at 4, uh, 254 nanometer, or which is also called deep ultraviolet spectrum of UV region. So when we we'll, uh, shine this UV uh, light on a semiconductor, as you know, that it will, uh, whenever the uh, illuminating uh, light or the photon energy has the uh, energy greater than the band gap of the material, so it will take your one electron from the valence band to conduction band. That means essentially you will produce one electron hole pair in the photosensitive material. So that's the uh, workings of any photosensitive material, obviously, depending on uh, your uh, uh, um, interest, like in which region of like in which spectrum you are interested. So depending on that, you need to choose your photosensitive material. So, so then you can, we can bias uh, and we can obviously we can metallize our uh, we can deposit our uh, or do metallization on set photosensitive material and uh, by applying the biasing we can separate those electron hole pairs generated due to the incidenting photons so this is the very basic understanding of a typical photodetector uh, now this is uh, from band diagram point of view also you can see so this is a pn junction uh, type photodetector okay i think let me take uh, this cash. So, just, just hold for a second. Okay. 
it seems my this uh, writing pad is not working. Okay, I'll work with this mouse. So uh, this is the band diagram of typical photodetector. This is PN junction based uh, photodetector. Uh, and here you can see that uh, with the illumination of light, we can excite uh, one electron uh, from the uh, balance band to conduction band. And then uh, after applying bias, we can separate this electron and the holes uh, and we can get a current out of it. So this is basically, you can also say like those who are from instrumentation, this is a type of transducer, which uh, actually converts your electrical, in a, uh, sorry, the uh, optical energy to your electrical energy. So now broadly the type of photodetector from the construction uh, point of view, uh, there are different type of photodetector. You can see this is there. There are like uh, um, uh, photo short key type of photodiode, then MSM or metal semiconductor metal type of photodetector, where we have uh, two metal uh, semiconductor contact, and then we can also have this metal insulator semiconductor photodiode, then PIN photodiode. Like uh, you can understand, like in between PN junction, we have one intrinsic layer, so which is uh, actually helping us to separate out these uh, uh, electron hole pairs efficiently. And along with that, so these are all typically two terminal devices. Uh, then we have field effect phototransistor. These are uh, as uh, and bipolar phototransistor. So these are all three terminal uh, photodetector. So in, uh, in our research, mostly we are focusing on this uh, third type of photodetector that is MSM photodiode. So where we have uh, semiconductor material on top of uh, that uh, that uh, semiconductor material, we we have two metallization and forming two metal semiconductor junction, and then we have this complete metal semiconductor metal photodiode. Uh, now, why we are choosing this metal semiconductor uh, metal photodiode and all that, we'll discuss. Uh, so now, um, coming back to the application, why obviously? So um, we are doing all this uh, research. Uh, there must be some motivation. So uh, broadly, you can see. This photodetectors based on its region of operation that I mentioned, like whether it is UV, visible, or near infrared, or so on. So based on that, we have different type of application. Like you can see right from the pollution detection to imaging, then bioimaging, even the telecommunication, chemical analysis, medical imaging, as well as uh, thermal imaging. So in all areas, we have a lot of application of this photo detector or this optical energy to electrical energy converter, you can say. So now this is a uh, very basic of uh, our, uh, this uh, considering the electromagnetic spectrum. So you can see here, ultraviolet comes just before the visible spectrum. Visible spectrum, that means, you know, this VIPGIR uh, or the uh, typically it is uh, from the 400 nanometer to uh, I guess 700 nanometer or so on. So which is, uh, we are seeing like uh, whatever the um, world like we are seeing uh, um, uh, using our eyes so it is coming under visible range now the ultraviolet this domain we cannot see uh, uh, from using our uh, this eye so that means you can understand like to to visualize anything under this spectrum we need some detector we need some detector uh, which can convert this optical uh, optical energy or the optical energy in this range of electromagnetic spectrum uh, so that we can sense that light. So again, you can see this ultraviolet light uh, broadly classified into three categories, which is UVC, UVB, and UVA. Again, it is depending on the uh, like um, uh, range of wavelength. So the kind of work or the um, research we are going on doing, so it is typically coming uh, in UVC range. So on uh, the um, gallium oxide made photodetectors works, uh, which has a band gap of uh, 4.9 electron volt. So uh, it works on, uh, within this UVC range. And uh, um, uh, typically it has the uh, detection uh, capacity uh, at 254 nanometer. So again, uh, if we need any Photo detector, which will sense UVC or uh, let's say uh, some particular wavelength. So that is actually decided by the band gap of the semiconductor, as we just mentioned. So here you can see what are the materials which we can choose um, to uh, and which we can can use 
as a deep UV photodetector. So you can see uh, in this uh, figure, so this aluminum gallium nitride, this is again nitride family of semiconductors. And again, uh, in case of oxide semiconductor, this gallium oxide, so these uh, materials can uh, sense light uh, uh, around 254 nanometer or in uh, UVC range. So now, how we are approaching, like uh, the overall, um, how we are, um, the, what are the methods we are following to uh, fabricate or to accomplish our research objectives? So this is again uh, some broad picture I am um, presenting. So here you can see um, we are uh, doing both simulation as well as experimental. So um, these are like you can say the two verticals of our research that I mentioned at the beginning. So we work on power device as well as DPV photodetector and uh, both the simulation as well as experimental thing we are doing. Now, for this uh, uh, experimental section, we are using uh, thin film as well as nanostructures to fabricate these two devices. So then again, this thin film and this nanostructure, we are developing using different uh, equipment. Like you can see this PLD, this is pulse laser deposition, uh, as well as this chemical vapor deposition or CVD and this electro spinning, this is another uh, technique. So we, using uh, this three technique, actually we are developing this uh, nano, uh, this uh, thin film as well as nanostructure uh, and which we are utilizing to you know, fabricate either power device or TPV photodetector. And obviously in, uh, um, in, in the interest of uh, present uh, discussion, I'll uh, discuss this deep UV photodetector developments at our lab. So now first I'll uh, try to explain. So uh, our, uh, this research effort uh, uh, using our low pressure chemical vapor deposition. So this is uh, the setup, like this is the custom made setup. Uh, we are utilizing uh, to develop the thin film as well as nanostructures. And this is the chemical uh, vapor deposition here we are doing and to develop this gallium oxide uh, materials. So uh, this is the schematic of that uh, uh, setup. And here you can see uh, like the, as a precursor, we are utilizing basically this argon gas as well as this oxygen gas. So, um, so argon gas here uh, is acting as uh, your, this uh, carrier gas. And then uh, we have this gallium that is the metal, uh, uh, metallic gallium inside this furnace and inside a boat, so uh, and above this boat, we have the substrate placed. So uh, at certain process parameter, so we will have this deposition of gallium oxide on this substrate. So these, these are the, again, some process uh, steps which we are following to develop this uh, the gallium oxide film. And this is the temperature profile roughly in which we are following to get a good quality gallium oxide thin film. Now, after developing uh, your um, uh, this material, so our first job is to confirm whether this developed material uh, is uh, of good quality or not. So uh, in order to do that, we are uh, first using this X-ray diffractometer. So this X -ray, uh, XRD result provide us with how good crystalline material is this, uh, is this uh, uh, gallium oxide. So then, from this uh, from this uh, the result, you can we can uh, confirm that we have three separate peaks, and which are essentially parallel peaks. Why you can see this two zero one? If you multiply, then four zero two. Then if you multiply uh, one second, then six zero three. So these are all the parallel planes, and that means we have very uniformly um, ordered atoms uh, in the gallium oxide. So then uh, next, uh, this characterization result is the efficient result we, from, uh, so using this, we need to confirm whether this is thin film or nanostructure. And here you can see, although we have some island formation, so, but still it is relatively uh, smooth sample, we can say. So then, uh, and the thickness which we get uh, using this CVD is around 300 nanometers. So 300 nanometers of photosensitive material 
on the substrate that is sapphire we we are able to uh, develop so after that, again another thing um, from this x-ray we confirm that roughly this gallium oxide material it shows polymorphism what is polymorphism so that means this depending on the arrangement of gallium as well as oxygen because you know unlike silicon and germanium which are your elemental semiconductor so in the lattice or in the crystal you will all only find the silicon atom or gallium uh, germanium atom but in case of this compound semiconductors so which is your gallium oxide so here we have two type of atoms so one is gallium another one is uh, oxygen and this gallium and oxygen this atomic arrangement can be different and leading to different type of crystal so consider uh, like uh, due to that uh, reason we uh, this uh, gallium oxide also shows polymorphism that means different type of crystalline uh, or crystal orientation you can uh, observe in case of gallium oxide like compound semiconductor material and the other thing which we could confirm from the from this xrd result is that we only uh, got this uh, beta phase of this gallium oxide because there are alpha beta gamma epsilon so there there are typically five phases are there or five type of crystals are there uh, which again like these are all gallium oxide material but the most stable one is the beta phase or which is in a monoclinic uh, structure so here uh, we from this xrd result we further confirm that we have only beta phase of gallium oxide because see these phases are important uh, or this alpha beta which type of uh, phase is there it is important because depending on that the uh, um, you will have your band gap and obviously your band gap will decide at which region it will detect your uv light so uh, it, it will vary so that that is why we need to confirm which phase is this gallium oxide so after confirming this uh, confirming this very good gallium oxide beta phase uh, gallium oxide layer uh, next we have done this uh, UV visible. So first one is the XPS uh, data. So where we have again confirmed the different materials present in the uh, semiconducting layer. And the uh, next, uh, this material characterization result is the UV visible spectroscopy. And from this UV visible spectroscopy, you can see we mm, we can further uh, confirm like at which region this semiconductor will work because uh, this UV visible, you can see this. Uh, it has this absorption at 254 274 nanometer so uh, so i think yeah so at this 274 nanometer it will have this uh, uh, like uh, absorption of your uv light or, or this uh, uh, electromagnetic spectrum that means uh, uh, if your this light uh, or this uh, or the electromagnetic spectrum which are incidenting on the on this gallium oxide based uh, photosensitive material so above uh, 274 nanometer it will not be able to absorb anything because see the to have absorption in semiconducting layer the energy should be higher than the band gap of the material and this energy and this wavelength is actually ha having inverse relationship so this lower will be the wavelength higher will be the um, uh, uh, energy of those photons so the lower will be the wavelength uh, those photons will be easily uh, absorbed by that photosensitive material so that means you can see below the 274 nanometer uh, wavelength so which has a higher uh, like uh, below this 274 nanometer the photons which are coming from the uh, light source so you can easily absorb or that your material or this gallium oxide material can easily absorb so that is why this uh, calculation results uh, are also important whether or at which uh, region you will have the detection. So from this, again, we can also calculate the what is the uh, band gap of the material we have developed. So here you can see um, we have this band gap of the material around 4.76 electron volt. So now following that, so here actually we have done uh, or we have tried to observe uh, another thing. And, uh, so which is if we keep on increasing the gallium uh, composition, 
So because in gallium oxide, we have both uh, gallium as well as oxygen. So what we have done, so we have kept constant uh, flow of oxygen and we kept on changing this gallium amount we have uh, during the deposition. So we developed different set of uh, samples. So we, so what we have observed, so when we are considering low um, amount of gallium, so we are getting thin film. That means there is no nanostructure formation on the surface. And when we are uh, taking a uh, higher amount of gallium, so uh, uh, we are taking higher, higher amount of gallium. Uh, I want to mean that uh, I have shown in that uh, CBD, that uh, furnace or that schematic, we are taking um, some amount of uh, gallium in the boat. And we are uh, keeping our substrate on top of that boat. So if we keep on increasing this gallium amount uh, in the boat, so then from thin film to nanostructure, we are getting this transition. And uh, so th this is the anyway. So uh, we have also uh, overall our objective is to observe uh, and uh, so how this detectivity and all other parameters of your photodetector can be engineered using uh, this uh, different structure. Like what is the uh, uh, performance when we are taking thin film of gallium oxide and what is the performance uh, if we are taking nanostructure of gallium oxide because in the in all the detectors or sensors so whenever we have this nanostructure we have one additional advantage that is the larger surface to volume ratio because we always uh, want a higher surface area so that we will be able to absorb higher amount of photons so that is why we have done this study so i think you can correlate all this so why we are doing this study from material point of view and how it can be engineered to get high performance photodetector so uh, these are some uh, that result efficient result uh, so here also you can see and that uh, when we are considering this low amount of gallium we are getting this thin film and but whereas when we are increasing this gallium uh, above 25 milligram so we are getting nanostructure so again uh, we have also done some study why we are getting uh, this kind of transition in the morphology why uh, this uh, low amount of gallium, uh, gallium giving us thin film and why we are getting um, uh, nanostructure so this particular problem is typically uh, material science problem and uh, the, or, or the growth related problem so uh, again we have seen the uh, uh, actually the vapor pressure of the gallium is uh, deciding like whether we will get the na thin film or nanostructure so after that um, so um, before moving to next slide, another observation I should uh, mention here. So this gallium oxide, uh, from very broad point of view, we know this uh, in terms of conductivity, different uh, so solid state materials are cl classified in three ways. So one is the metal, which has this overlapped uh, your conduction band and valence band. So you have a lot of electrons or carriers which can carry current. And, and um, this uh, next one is the semiconductor, of course, which have some energy difference uh, between conduction band and uh, balance band. And another, the last one is insulator. So in case of insulator, as we know that there is a higher band gap. So it, it takes a lot of energy uh, uh, for an electron to go from balance band to conduction band or to have the conductivity in the semiconductor. So actually, in case of this ultra uh, wide band gap semiconductor, we have this problem because you can uh, just you can ask me. So since these all materials has higher band gap, don't you think it will be difficult uh, to have conductivity like you will not get good conductivity? Yes, it is true. Like uh, for all this uh, ultra wide band gap semiconductors, it is very difficult to get good conductivity. So what is the solution now and why people are interested, although in this wide band gap semiconductor material, although it is difficult to have conductivity because end of the day, our main objective is to uh, make device where we uh, some carriers will flow through the device or will have the flow of uh, essentially the electrons. 
So then why we are interested in these wide band gap semiconductors or this ultra wide band gap semiconductors? So the primary advantage of the of this type of gallium oxide or gallium nitride or aluminium gallium like gallium nitride like wider band gap or ultra wide band gap semiconductor is we can dope this semiconductor. So if we can dope any semiconductor, that means we can modulate the conductivity of the semiconductor. So any semiconductor or rather I can say in this way, like any insulator, if we can dope this insulator and we, if we can change or modulate the conductivity of that insulator, so we can use that insulator or insulating material to fabricate electronic device. So now you can see like, uh, although this, uh, so again, in case of gallium oxide also, if we, if you see uh, just uh, 10 years back, 10 to 15 years back, people uh, considered this gallium oxide as an insulator. But now this is uh, very much emerging semiconducting material for this uh, emerging devices or application. So the reason is that we can dope this gallium oxide and we can modulate or change the conductivity according to our, uh, this uh, uh, application. So, and, uh, again, uh, uh, using those thin film that will now coming to this, uh, our research. So whatever the uh, thin film or nanostructure we have developed in this uh, uh, earlier uh, slide. So it is very difficult to get conductivity. So whenever we tried to uh, do some metallization and check the conductivity, absolutely there was no current. So uh, because see, uh, we also need to have current because these all photodetectors, essentially it is uh, again, this is a transducer. It will convert your optical energy to electrical energy, and we need to get uh, at least some amount of uh, or uh, some amount of uh, current without illumination. So now it was very difficult without doping. So uh, if we connect uh, any uh, or if you bias uh, after metallization, so there was absolutely uh, like a very low amount of current. I would say. I I should not say there was no current but very low amount of current was there. Again, it was very difficult to get uh, contact because in this all wide band gap semiconductor, this is another challenge to get good contact, good metallization. So this is another uh, challenge. So now to address that challenge, so what we have done, we have tried to dope it. So we have tried to dope this uh, gallium oxide using the tin or SN. So okay, again, you can see this is the uh, this is the configuration or, or that uh, uh, in the CVD furnace we have used when doping this gallium oxide using tin or SN. So again, you can see this is the efficient image and this is the uh, side view of the uh, thin layer we have developed. So the thickness was around 700 nanometer. Now here the problem is this, although we could get good conductivity now, unlike the previous uh, undoped gallium oxide thin film layer. So, but the problem in this is SN doped gallium oxide uh, film, you can see. So this is not very smooth uh, film uh, uh, like uh, before. So here we have some trench like structure. So here you can see this triangle, this uh, trench like structure. And this is actually the due to the behavior of SN because this SN uh, again, uh, these are all material science, uh, science uh, thing, but it, we need to uh, go address all these challenges to get good device. Okay. Now this SN has this segregation. So this is another material property of this tin. So this SN or this tin has this segregation uh, type of thing. So it is very difficult to uh, manage this uh, SN when uh, doping this gallium oxide. So after that, we have again uh, done this uh, XRD as well as this UV visible spectroscopy. And from where we have confirmed again uh, that the, it, uh, we have good uh, gallium oxide uh, crystal as well as, so there is uh, no alloy formation. Okay, so this uh, no alloy formation means, see when we do using any foreign atoms here, the tin, so it is also likely that if we increase this tin composition, it will form a no, alloy. Alloy means, uh, see uh, what is doping. So doping means in case of, if I give you an example of silicon doping. So as you know, so if there are 10 to the power 22 uh, per centimeter cube, like the, uh, if there are so many atoms, like 10 to the power 22 silicon atoms uh, per centimeter cube. 
so typically uh, our doping level should be of the order of 10 to the power 17 per centimeter cube so you can see there still there are like although we are incorporating foreign atoms so in the lattice or the crystal we are uh, replacing some silicon uh, atom with the foreign atoms but from 10 to the power 17 to 10 to the power 22 so you can see there is a huge change in some uh, like some orders but if we keep on increasing this doping it is possible like the number of existing uh, this uh, host atom and the foreign atoms become equal so in that case what will be the uh, situation so we will end up in some alloy so alloy means uh, here you can see like uh, sn gallium uh, sn uh, gallium uh, ga2o3 so it will be a uh, it will be an alloy so um, so that we also need to confirm so whether we are making alloy or whether we are doing uh, or we are doping it so that we also need to ensure so what we have observed here so we uh, so if we have any alloy formation then there will be a peak shift why this peak shift will uh, occur because see this uh, in xrd uh, basically you know this uh, 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 it uh, 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 the primary principle uh, um, uh, on which it is based is the bragg's law so which has this uh, uh, lattice constant or this uh, atomic distance uh, um, uh, like the distance between two atoms which decides uh, your what will be where you will have these peaks and what will be the interference pattern and all that so uh, so when we have this alloy formation so all together your lattice distance or uh, this interference pattern everything will change and thereby you will have some shift in the xrd peak if we have shift in the peak so then you can confirm that there is alloy formation and which is all uh, obviously uh, uh, not desired in this case because our main uh, objective is to dope not to form the alloy so from this xrd graph we also confirm that there is no alloy formation uh, rather uh, there is a doping because uh, from the uh, xps or other characterization result we actually we observe that there is a incorporation of this foreign atom that is tin or sn so after that we have also done this uv visible spectroscopy where we have observed that there is a transition uh, in absorption uh, and we have uh, confirmed that the band gap is around 4.6 electron volt so also the uh, after doping um, see the hall we have done some hall measurement because this hall measurement is the primary uh, characterization technique uh, as you know to check um, this uh, carrier concentration and the mobility of the uh, of any thin film developed so uh, earlier uh, the whatever the uh, undoped gallium oxide we we uh, we have uh, developed so it was very difficult to get any con um, connection like uh, that uh, uh, you need to connect uh, your this uh, probe on the um, uh, semiconducting material so it was very difficult but here you, you can see uh, uh, we we could connect uh, those probe on the semiconducting layer after doping it with the tin, and we uh, obtained carrier concentration around 10 to the power 16 per centimeter cube, and the mobility we found around two centimeters square per voltage second, and these are all room temperature data. So uh, again, another thing, see uh, this uh, the, uh, this uh, ray diagram showing. So on in case of smooth surface as well as triangular textured surface. So as we have observed in this uh, textured surface, when doping it with the tin, we have uh, this strange like or this triangular like defect or this uh, pattern on the surface. And due to this pattern, actually, it can help us to trap more photon what is this uh, trapping or more photon see overall our objective is to absorb more and more photon so if we can absorb more and more photon we will be able to get more uh, or better uh, photoreflector so okay, if we have this smooth surface so then uh, this uh, some proportion of this uh, incident ray will always get reflected back which we will like the, those photon will not be able to absorb but if we have this patterned uh, sub, uh, surface so then it is possible that uh, this more amount of photon will get trapped in that uh, texture surface so this is another advantage that we can take when doping this gallium oxide using tin 
so this is again uh, the uh, process or the fabrication uh, process we are following to develop this detector so here you can see this substrate after cleaning this substrate we are depositing this gallium oxide and then doping it then by optical lithography we are developing this uh, this is called ID pattern or interdigitized electrode pattern and this interdigitated electrode pattern is also another form of MSM. So what is this MSM? You can, I think here you can see. So this is one electrode. So this is the real uh, uh, picture of our this process sample. So this is one electrode, another electrode is here. And these are all ID patterns. So in a, this tool, uh, all the electrodes uh, are uh, the interdigitated. So the why this is uh, called MSM. So you can see here. So this is metal, and in between this darker portion is the semiconductor. And again we have this metal. So that is why we have this metal semiconductor, metal uh, type of photodetector. And why we are using this uh, configuration? We also have this uh, this uh, reason. So because in uh, uh, in case of metal semiconductor metal it can be represented as a anyway, my this writing pad is not working so this metal semiconductor metal when we have this Schottky contact in case of both metal semiconductor uh, junction so why uh, we'll end up in a uh, uh, circuit model which has two back-to-back -back diode connected now once we have two back-to-back -back connected diode so then only the current which will flow through the uh, device is the uh, reverse saturation current without any illumination without any illumination just simply if we uh, try to observe the observe the behavior we'll get the third quadrant behavior because whatever the bias will apply whether so one particular diode will be reverse bias so that means the overall current which we'll get from this uh, two back to back uh, diode configuration or this MSM configuration of your uh, device. So we'll get the reverse saturation current. So again, you know, this reverse saturation current, mainly the, um, the thermally generated carriers are responsible uh, for th that current. So uh, again, so, uh, so this is the advantage. So the current without illumination will, uh, will be very, very small. And that is our objective because so in case of detector, we want the current to be as high as possible when we are illuminating the device. But when we are not illuminating the device, the current should be as minimum as possible. And this is termed as dark current. So this dark current should be very uh, like as minimum as possible. And this photo current under illumination should be as high as possible. So then uh, coming back to this uh, electrical characterization of our fabricated device. So here you can see this is the typical current voltage characteristics. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, uh, so, okay, so you can see this uh, dark current. So dark current is uh, around, so if we consider this, this is a 50 volt, so around 10 to the power minus eight. So due to this MSM advantage that I just explained. And if we illuminate this device with the different uh, light uh, uh, or having different wavelength, or having different photon energy, then you can see when we we'll we are illuminating this device with the uh, with the light having 365 uh, nanometer wavelength, uh, then we are getting some increment in the current, and uh, thereby if we keep on increasing this uh, uh, or sorry, if we keep on decreasing the wavelength, that means. Uh, if we keep on decreasing the wavelength of our electromagnetic uh, like light, that means we are increasing the photon energy because photon energy and wavelength of a light are inversely proportional. So if we uh, if we keep on decreasing the wavelength of light and keep on increasing the uh, photon energy, we are getting high current. So that means uh, uh, the amount or the number of electron hole pairs we are generating with the illumination of 254 nanometer, 254 nanometer uh, this uh, uh, wavelength of light is very high. And obviously these are all uh, made of gallium oxide. So at 254 nanometer, we have a huge absorption uh, of uh, electromagnetic spectrum uh, because the most of the uh, uh, photons having higher, uh, having energy higher than the band gap are getting absorbed. 
and uh, eventually it is uh, producing a um, lot of carriers that means lot of electrons in the conduction band and lot of holes in the valence band and uh, which is essentially giving us a uh, huge current so you can see uh, we have change in the current from 10 to the power minus 8 to 10 to the power uh, minus 3 uh, so with the illumination of light so this is a simple uh, again this is called uh, there is another uh, these are all uh, uh, specification of typical photodetector because see you know that uh, uh, if you take any diode so typical typically the uh, different uh, specifications are on a, on to off current ratio what is the ideal factor what is the reverse saturation current and similarly uh, if we um, uh, just uh, 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 roughly if i say if we go to market and uh, look for some uh, photo detector we need to mention all these parameter what is the what is the photo to dark current ratio what is the responsivity what is the detectivity and what is the external quantum efficiency so using these actu uh, parameters actually we need to um, justify the performance of our device so how good uh, or how bad our device is we can uh, justify using all these uh, performance parameters so now this photo to dark current ratio it is uh, simply you can see this uh, ratio between photo current to dark current and uh, similarly in in case of photo to dark current you can see uh, these devices which we have developed has uh, 90000 90476 uh, okay, precisely so 90000 so the ratio so which is again if we compare the existing report or existing uh, research uh, that people have done so this is very good result in that sense other few parameters are the responsivity it it is actually saying um, uh, see this all the light uh, we are shining all the or the illumin or the uv light we are uh, detecting it, it has some intensity and that is uh, again uh, coming in terms of what so how much uh, is the wattage of your uh, illuminating uh, uh, this uh, source so then how may, how much current you are producing from your device or detector that is called sensitivity so so more higher is the sensitivity uh, or this responsivity better is your device so you can see okay, this uh, this power of optical power uh, so this is i photo minus i dark divided by um, uh, the optical power you are um, incidenting your device so this is uh, again another performance parameter so detectivity is again another performance parameter which is related to the dark current so you can see from here the lower will be the dark current better will be the detectivity and better will be the detectivity like uh, you, you can understand like uh, we will have uh, better uh, device performance and another par parameter for your this uh, photo detector are, is the external quantum efficiency so quantum efficiency again when the efficiency terms is coming that means this how much input energy you are providing and how much output energy you are getting so this is uh, the efficiency so uh, here in uh, this is again uh, as i mentioned earlier also like this is a, basically a, a transducer or energy converter which is converting your optical uh, energy to electrical energy so this external efficiency uh, um, the higher will be the efficiency better is our device so again these are some other characterization results uh, of uh, sn doped gallium oxide so finally you uh, here you can see the device which we could uh, fabricate it has uh, this uh, 10 to the power minus 8 amperes of dark current at 50 volt bias again this 50 volt via um, uh, 50 volt of bias is uh, not typical like for the other photodetectors and that this uh, 50 volt we could apply because these are all wide band gap semiconductors because uh, for uh, uh, lower low band gap semiconductors will not be able to uh, uh, operate at this uh, uh, high uh, voltage uh, and uh, after that you can see all these other parameters like photo to dark current ratio and this uh, responsibility then this detectivity and this quantum efficiency again here one question you can ask me see this uh, quantum efficiency the unit should be uh, 
uh, obviously in the uh, of the order of uh, like uh, percentage so what is uh, overall this ratio should have some percentage so although so you know, it is in percentage but uh, the result we are getting is uh, 7.4 into 10 to the power 5 so that means uh, obviously uh, uh, more than like uh, not only more than very um, like uh, well above your 100 so uh, now the uh, obviously the question is how can i get uh, this uh, more uh, uh, output uh, giving very small input so how how this is possible so this advantage actually is coming due to that textured surface due to the textured surface we have that electron uh, light trapping and due to that light trapping actually one photon is not um, uh, giving us one electron hole pair ideally um, one elect uh, like one photon should illuminate or should uh, give us one electron hole pair but due to this light trapping we have this multiplication effect and due to that uh, we have uh, this uh, higher efficiency like more than 100 uh, we are getting this efficiency is due to that textured uh, surface and related uh, uh, photon capturing and uh, multiplication effect. And next uh, uh, two parameters uh, are again asian very essential parameters uh, that is rise time and fall time because this rise time and fall time is see uh, uh, typically uh, you can understand so uh, we, uh, so if we con consider the speed of our device, so how quickly our this device will respond to the uh, shining light. So this, uh, uh, so that is decided by this uh, two parameters, that is rise time and the fall time. So lower will be this rise time and fall time, better will be the speed of our device or response speed. So, uh, so uh, in this two aspect, actually our these devices are uh, like not performing well. Again, you can understand like uh, everything we, uh, is not possible to engineer, uh, rather we can uh, go with some uh, trade-off. So uh, in that sense, you can say all these parameters like uh, dark current, photo to dark current ratio, responsibility, detectivity, and uh, external quantum efficiency, although we are uh, getting very high performance from these devices, but these devices has the disadvantages of this low speed or uh, which is coming in the form of rise time and fall time so again uh, this is uh, that transient characterization characterization from where we are actually getting those uh, speed related parameters so this is again that uh, mechanism we have tried to understand so why we are getting so high uh, uh, photo to dark current ratio or the efficiency so here you can see this uh, this we have this photoconductive gain this uh, then the advantage of this uh, triangular textured surface as well as we have the advantage of this platinum electrodes so which uh, all these factors are essentially increasing the responsibility or the uh, external quantum efficiency of our device now following that so this is again uh, another work so here you can see uh, as the this title uh, uh, says it is a mixed nanostructure so earlier we have uh, sn doped gallium oxide but here you can see you know when we have uh, tried to uh, dope this semiconductor uh, with more uh, tin we end up in getting this alloy fine like uh, this is although this was not a desired uh, thing uh, mm. but uh, we have also tried to see once we have this alloy formation what is the performance so again uh, previously we have also shown uh, that uh, when we are taking more amount of gallium we are getting nanostructure so uh, the, uh, so then we end up in getting SN gallium oxide like all or the SN alloyed gallium oxide along with the nanostructure. So we have um, also fabricated that uh, semiconducting material or photosynthetic material uh, similarly uh, after lithography and all that. So then we have achieved uh, this performance. So here you can see, so uh, this is the performance. Uh, so once again, we are getting uh, this uh, 
um, PDCR of the order of 10 to the power 4. So which uh, that, that means the photo to dark current ratio is still very high. And these are again other uh, these uh, parameters like uh, you can uh, you can see so, but here this responsibility wise so this is the microampere per watt so this responsibility wise this was this is not uh, uh, responsibility of PDCR wise this is not better than the previous one although we have alloyed and uh, nanostructure so maybe we are uh, losing the photon or the incidenting light or the incidenting photon in some other way. So that, that is why we are not getting the better performance which we expected to uh, get. So then these are uh, some other mechanism uh, we have tried to uh, observe like why we are getting this uh, uh, performance. So here you can see like this responsibility why. So this is the benchmarking. So benchmarking is always uh, important uh, uh, research, uh, I, I would say like research uh, like, um, methodology or so where we we should actually show uh, the device performance like the, our device performance with the existing literature. So in this benchmarking plot, you can see this particular device is not uh, uh, performing very well compared to others because see there are a few. So this is a dark current versus responsibility uh, graph. And in this graph, the better performance we can expect in this corner. Because uh, see, we always want this lower as low as dark current possible. Because uh, see this dark current, uh, that means we are not uh, illuminating or uh, shining our sample and get the current we are getting, that is the dark current. So because again, this dark current will also give us better detectivity. So overall, our objective from our device is to get as minimum as possible dark current and as much as possible responsibility if we can get. So considering that, so the device which will be more towards this corner, that means uh, this left top corner, better will be the device. So if we see now compared to other reference, mm, yeah, our device uh, or this particular device is not performing very well compared to others. So uh, this is the thing. So following that, um, so these are all the effort we have done um, uh, using this CVD. So here, whatever the uh, devices uh, or the materials we have developed, that calcium oxide material we have developed using the CVD or chemical vapor equation. So we have used another technique actually to develop this uh, materials. So which is uh, again, a um, little bit of facile deposition technique and uh, the, the name of this technique is electro spinning or electro spraying. So this year, what is electro spinning and electro spraying? So basically uh, this type of uh, instruments uh, are used to develop uh, nanofiber. So you can see the basic configuration is here. We have a semiconducting material uh, along with some polymer and which, uh, so this particular, this, uh, 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 this probe, it uh, using this probe, actually we are applying very high voltage between this uh, uh, needle, uh, this syringe needle and this, uh, this is the spindle. So uh, uh, essentially it rotates. So when it rotates, uh, this uh, due to the uh, uh, electrostatic force, this uh, semiconducting uh, material along with the polymer is coming from this uh, uh, syringe and getting deposited on this spindle. And on this uh, top of this spindle, we are actually keeping uh, some uh, substrate or sometime uh, we are taking directly those uh, nanofibers uh, along with the polymers. So after de uh, depositing those nanostructures uh, or semiconducting nanostructure along with the polymer, you, uh, by utilizing uh, this electro spinning technique, we are again annealing this all uh, um, uh, nanofibers or these nanostructures uh, to uh, evaporate out those uh, polymers because obviously these polymers, we do not want uh, these polymers uh, to stay. Uh, then we are getting this uh, uh, only semiconducting uh, nanostructures. So um, using this uh, nanostructure, you can see we could achieve very uh, small nanoflakes. So this uh, nanoflakes uh, have the uh, thickness of around 
three nanometer. This is very small. And um, okay, so this is a bit. Uh, uh, okay, this is another discussion uh, regarding this gallium oxide uh, because see this all these gallium oxide layers uh, or the semiconducting layer uh, in beta form uh, can be exfoli exfoliated, like uh, it can be peeled off, like a graphene. If you know the graphene and that uh, this famous technique by uh, Andre Gim, uh, who anyway you know this uh, got Nobel Prize. So this gallium oxide layers uh, or these semiconductors can be developed by peeling off. Why we can peel off these layers? Because uh, because of its uh, crystal structure. Uh, this uh, in one direction, the atomic distance uh, is very high. Like uh, yeah, if I uh, if I am correct, so I think uh, in one direction the two atom has the uh, distance of 1.2 nanometer. Whereas in other direction, two atom has the distance of 0.3 nanometer. So obviously, higher uh, is the atomic distance, the bonds are uh, like weaker. So in that case, we can simply peel, uh, like uh, using some tape also people have demonstrated that we can peel off or uh, separate the atoms because of this uh, dissimilarity in the um, atomic bonds. And because of obviously, it's a uh, crystal structure having this dissimilar atomic uh, distance. So uh, following that, so here also we could achieve this very thin gallium oxide layer having three nanometer of thickness. And uh, again, we have done some uh, transmission electron microscopy uh, to check whether we are getting uh, good crystalline material or not. Because see, uh, to get good solid state device or high performance solid state device, Material should be very uh, like uh, should be very uh, crystal like very good crystalline. Otherwise, uh, it will have lot of reliability reliability as well as performance related issues. So now to understand whether this um, because this uh, electro spinning technique is little bit different technique or I would say non conventional technique because CVD technique is a well known technique uh, I think for the past fifty years people people are using to get good crystalline materials because but this electro spinning since this is a new technique uh, to develop this kind of uh, semiconducting material and this uh, uh, to fabricate solid state devices we are a bit skeptic like whether we are getting good crystalline material or not but eventually we observe uh, and we have we could see like this sad pattern in the team which is confirming that we are getting very good crystalline material these are not either polycrystalline or not amorphous. So after confirming this good material uh, um, characteristics of our this electro spin um, gallium oxide layer, so we have fabricated this device uh, using this uh, uh, metallization, aluminum and tungsten. And here also we have done this uh, electrical characterization. So after doing this, so Oh, okay, so I have 25 more minutes. So, okay, um, so here I have, where is that? Okay. So here we could uh, achieve uh, this uh, uh, dark current uh, of 10 to the power minus 8 ampere. And this photo current, you, you can see this uh, is, uh, it. once again, we are getting 10 to the power 4 order uh, of increment um, when we are illuminating these devices. So it, once again, we are getting very high uh, performance uh, in terms of uh, uh, photo to dark current ratio as well as responsibility. But again, um, this rise time to fall time, uh, this uh, speed related performance is not very good um, in this type of devices also. So uh, again, we have tried to understand like why we are getting this high performance in this uh, type of uh, nanoflake based uh, photodetector. So, uh, so we attributed this uh, performance to uh, this uh, high surface to volume ratio because obviously this nanoflakes has a very high, uh, large uh, amount of surface compared to the volume. And also uh, see this, there is a light traffic. So in this uh, ray diagram, we have tried to understand uh, that uh, there is a possibility of light trapping between the gallium oxide and the below uh, silicon dioxide. Okay, so this 
uh, gallium oxide we have deposited on the silicon substrate and you know that on silicon substrate if we don't clean it uh, properly we will always have some native oxide that means silicon dioxide so this on sil silicon dioxide and this gallium oxide they are actually forming some interface and uh, interface and this uh, due to the difference in the refractive index there is a possibility of uh, your uh, photons uh, getting trapped at this interface and then there is a possibility that one single photon may uh, give us uh, more than one uh, electron hole pair or so on and that uh, in that case we will get very high uh, responsibility as well as a very high uh, external quantum efficiency so uh, after that uh, initial uh, demonstration of, of this uh, gallium oxide related nanoflakes we have uh, again tried to understand if we dope it whether it is possible to increase the performance or not so what we have done we have uh, uh, made uh, some solution using both indium as well as gallium so when uh, using this both indium and gallium so what we have observed so this is again the uh, this uh, and uh, nano flakes uh, or this nano structure deposited on the uh, quartz plate and on top of that we have deposited this uh, um, uh, gold uh, and aluminium uh, so so these are the uh, uh, nano structures uh, we have observed uh, in case of indium and gallium so uh, here it is not only made of uh, gallium so uh, also we have indium yeah, uh, within this uh, type of uh, nanostructure. So um, again, we have uh, observed uh, very good uh, performance in terms of photo to dark current ratio. So here you can see the ratio uh, is uh, more than uh, I think 2,98,000. So this photo to dark current ratio is again, once again, very high. Uh, so when we are illuminating this with 254 nanometers, so this is the responsibility and this is the bias voltage so you can see uh, once again that as we keep on increasing uh, uh, the photon energy or keep on decreasing the wavelength of light we are getting more and more responsibility so this uh, blue one is 365 nanometer this red one is uh, 302 and this uh, brown one is for 254 nanometer. So obviously the higher is the photon energy, higher the responsibility or the electron hole pair generation uh, is inside the, um, this type of photodetector. But uh, once again, the disadvantage is this rise time and the fall time. So these devices are slower in terms of speed. Um, so there, is, there we need to do this uh, trade-off, uh, obviously. So here also we have tried to understand like uh, what is the mechanism which is responsible to give us this high uh, 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 photo current ratio or other parameters. So here you can see once again, this is the benchmarking of our this result. So in this type of this nano wares, we are getting this good responsibility as well as this uh, uh, dark current. Uh, although we have this uh, uh, poor uh, rise time and the fall time, and this few, this is the photo dark, dark current ratio and the uh, external quantum efficiency or detectivity. So if we compare these uh, figures from this particular device, this performance are better. But the problem of, of this particular device, apart from the speed, is this dark current. See the dark current for, uh, sorry, sorry. So this, this is the dark current. So this dark current to, uh, is, the, is of the order of 10 to the power minus 7. But the, for other uh, uh, devices, you can see uh, they are having the dark current of, of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 uh, or 10 to the power minus 8 or 10 to the power minus 12. So this uh, dark current in case of our device is somehow uh, like uh, I would say uh, poor because we our dark in terms like for a good detector, the dark current should be as minimum as possible. So we have tried to Oh, now in the next work or here we have now tried to uh, decrease this dark current so here we have actually uh, tried to go in uh, so this is i would say like uh, very uh, uh, new technique or this novel technique um, using which we could engineer this dark current or we could reduce this dark current 
so essentially um, what we have done we have borrowed the concept of solar cell so see here we have uh, used this sapphire this is the substrate and then on top of that we have deposited p type um, copper oxide so this is copper oxide is intrinsically p type uh, whereas your gallium oxide is intrinsically n type so then on this p type copper oxide we have deposited this gallium oxide and what is happening here uh, see this uh, due to this pn junction we will have some depletion region so that depletion region will be at this interface and due to the formation of that depletion region now if, if we consider that two platinum electrode on top of this uh, gallium oxide which is essentially giving us that same msm structure that metal semiconductor metal structure so for uh, this uh, due to this depletion region at this pn junction we have reduced uh, thickness of this gallium oxide reduced thickness of gallium oxide uh, i want to mean see this uh, out of this 500 nanometer of gallium oxide some portion of this gallium oxide is depleted when uh, we are not illuminating this uh, sample so due to that what is happening uh, you know this uh, uh, now if we bias this or this apply voltage across this two platinum electrode without illumination or under dark condition what is happening due to the reduced thickness of gallium oxide our this overall resistance of this channel is high so this r dark is high and now due to this increased uh, resistance of this channel layer made of your gallium oxide we are getting low dark current because obviously higher will be the resistance lower will be the current and this increased resistance we are getting due to the reduced thickness because rho equal, r equals to rho l by a and that area uh, that uh, a or the in the denominator that a has this uh, width of the channel so if we can reduce that uh, area uh, or the width then we can actually increase the uh, resistance and then we can get, we can get the lower dark current so that we have done here now now obviously the question is what is happening when we are illuminating whether that same re reduction in uh, raised uh, uh, channel resistance is there or not see in case of illumination uh, as we know if we illuminate any pn junction uh, obviously like uh, with the higher band gap so then the depletion region uh, width will reduce and since the depletion region this de illumination is reducing we are getting more channel within this gallium oxide from uh, through which our carriers can flow that means now uh, we'll have this uh, uh, higher width higher area uh, lower uh, our illumination or uh, better current under illumination which is again our desired uh, parameter so we could see how by incorporating this pn junction we could actually lower this dark current and get the uh, higher uh, this uh, photo current so this is a some uh, very like after doing this work also we were very like you know this uh, very happy and to see this uh, effect also we are very happy so after this uh, after developing this uh, uh, material so these are again material development uh, uh results so using xrd fcm and same uv visible spectroscopy that result so now here you can see in this uh, electrical characterization so this is the control sample just uh, consider this uh, figure a and b so without that p type copper oxide or without that pn junction see our dark current was of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 now when we incorporate that pn junction our dark current have the reduction of this uh, almost 10 to the power minus 13 that means 10 to the power 3 amount of uh, reduction in the dark current we could have due to the incorporation of that pn junction so that means our this uh, uh, incorporation of this p uh, copper oxide layer or this uh, incorporation of pn junction is really working when see this uh, again in terms of photo current we are not compromising so uh, without uh, this uh, uh, p type copper oxide we are having 10 to the power 7 of order of uh, current uh, yeah, again after this uh, p copper oxide incorporation or np junction incorporation also we have this 10 to the power 7 uh, order of photo current
so while keeping so overall you can see like while keeping or uh, this same photo current we how can we reduce reduce this dark current by using this uh, heterojunction so these are the thing and these are the other parameters again unfortunately in this type of uh, devices also like we uh, so the speed is very low that you can see this uh, response time is uh, of the order of uh, you know this uh, second so this is very like uh, the devices are very very slow so this is uh, some other way we could uh, we try to understand like how this channel uh, loading is happening uh, in uh, by incorporating this p type copper oxide uh, below your n type gallium oxide these are some simulation and the related electric field distribution uh, control plot and see here this is the benchmarking plot and now same this dark current versus photo respon uh, responsibility this chart now see this particular device see anyway so i have taken this uh, chart from my uh, one uh, student's thesis so this here this uh, uh, reference 44 so here we have this performance so we could reduce the dark current while keeping this height uh, for responsibility so um, that means we could get uh, more uh, corner uh, towards uh, this uh, like our desired performance so uh, uh, so this is the benchmarking of this result and uh, so this is the thing again that same chart so again further to enhance this uh, device performance we have tried to see if by incorporating this nanoparticle we can uh, further enhance the performance of the device or not see this nanoparticle is uh, is expected to have plasmonic effect so what is this plasmonic effect it is actually uh, this uh, you know, the uh, photons or the electromagnetic spectrum which are uh, uh, electron like the energy which is coming so it can actually yeah, uh, effectively increase this uh, uh, photon uh, absorption and can give us more electron hole pair. So due to this plasmonic effect. So now um, how to get this, see this, uh, there are a lot of study uh, using this plasmon, uh, mostly utilizing gold nanoparticle either or silver nanoparticle. But the problem with those uh, silver or gold nanoparticle is that those nanoparticle or the, those uh, nanoparticle shows plasmonic effect in visible range. But now our objective is to work in the UV range. So obviously we need to find out uh, some uh, some other material. So in that uh, sense, um, what we could achieve or we could uh, like find that this gallium indium, this uh, nanoparticle uh, uh, provides this uh, plasmonic effect in the UV domain. So now to understand that, see, what is it? See, these are all other materials. So here we have shown this nanoparticle development. Um, so here we have tried to see that whether these nanoparticles are uh, giving us any absorption uh, at uh, this uh, UV domain or not. So, so again, uh, after this incorporating this nanoparticle, uh, we have this in uh, enhancement in the photo to dark current ratio as well as this responsibility. But in this case, actually, our dark current uh, also increases a little bit uh, because of uh, this, uh, perhaps due to this uh, plasmonic effect or other effect. So if we see here, so here we have, so here you can see, this is, so this is the first objective three was the previous work and objective four was the this plasmonic work. So in this um, ob objective four in, or the, uh, in this plasmonic work, you can see our this uh, dots or this uh, benchmarking spot shifted little bit uh, from this corner because of this higher dark current. Although we could have little bit enhancement in the, um, the photo current. Again, remember uh, this uh, both the plots are in log scale. So anyway, so uh, so um, uh, uh, this is the overall impact of your uh, uh, gallium indium nanoparticle and its plasmonic effect. So okay, so now in uh, uh, in conclusion. 
we um, overall we have observed that this gallium oxide is obviously very promising uh, for this uv uh, optoelectronic application and both thin film as well as nanostructure can be fabricated to get this good uh, photo detection detection and uh, both com conventional lpcvd as well as the facile techniques such as your electro spinning uh, can be used to get good uh, detector performance and uh, obviously see this uh, the point i kept on saying that this although we could achieve good uh, performance uh, or this photo detector performance in terms of responsivity dark current but the speed has been uh, very low so that means we need to find out some application where we can utilize uh, this uh, particular detectors with uh, low speed requirement uh, so um, this is the conclusion okay finally i would like to acknowledge the funding support uh, i am getting from our institute iit mandi as well as uh, um, uh, ministry, uh, this DST as well as MHRD, and thank you, thank you. So now, you, yeah, I would be happy if you have uh, have any question. Like, I'd be happy to answer. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for sharing the uh, interesting experimental work that uh, your group is doing at IIT Bandi. So mainly to summarize this talk, so you first discussed uh, with the uh, basic working of a photodiode, yeah. I mean, of, of a photo detector. So basically, uh, after that, we have discussed the potential application of this uh, photo detector, right from imaging to telecommunication and thermal imaging and so on. Uh, after that, uh, you have discussed the uh, the wide band gap semiconductors uh, that. Uh, uh, gallium oxide waste uh, that we are using for the uh, this photo detector and we have discussed the fabrication uh, techniques uh, that is the uh, LPCVD technique for uh, depositing the thin films of the uh, material. Also you have discussed the uh, electrical characterization of the fabricated device uh, and its important parameter of a photo detector right from uh, uh, dark um, photo current to dark <coughs> to external quantum efficiency, uh, responsivity, and detectivity. And also, we have discussed how the uh, gallium oxide uh, material can be doped using tin, and how the uh, the conductivity can be increased by that. So overall, uh, I hope uh, uh, with this particular talk, the participants would have got the more insight towards the wide band gap uh, semiconductors for the photo detection uh, applications. So I once again thank you. Uh, if the partic participants have any questions, so uh, they can ask the questions. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Yes, please. So participants can ask their questions. Can ask. Sir, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yep. which is the yep. instrument? Which is the instrument used for uh, to obtain uh, electrical uh, characterization as well as uh, transient response? Okay, so okay, that electrical uh, setup. See, this is again a. Uh, uh, custom made setup i would say like we do not have any uh, sophisticated uh, photo detector characterization setup so we have used that uh, kitlet 4200 uh, uh, to measure this uh, electrical responses and we have for the light we have used a separate lamp like a standard uv lamp we have used uh, obviously we have calibrated those lamp because we need to calibrate uh, the intensity as well as the uh, at which uh, wavelength it is uh, uh having the emission so that we have calibrated first and then we have used so that is why if you see like uh, in uh, literature you will find some uh, result which has uh, uh, complete uh, uh, response throughout the spectrum that means from uh, let's say 250 nanometer to uh, 500 nanometer for entire uh, range you will find some report but here we could not get this entire range because we are utilizing this uh, uh, 
separate lamp having different uh, emission as well as this uh, uh, power. So this is the setup we have used. Yes, sir. Is it like uh, a laboratory a experiment uh, which is used for uh, photo detecting process? Yes. Sorry, I could not get you. Yeah, can you tell me once again? Sir, uh, is it like a, a photo detecting experiment which we used to do in graduation level um, experiment purpose? See, uh, if we, uh, if you want to uh, converting. Uh, yeah, so if you want to make uh, or build complete uh, this photo detector setup, so as I understand, uh, so you can take some uh, this uh, uh, light source, like typically I think, uh, anyway, we are trying to build up that uh, setup also, like some uh, white, uh, I think some halogen. So yeah, uh, some la uh, lamp setup, then we need to use this chopper and other accessories. Uh, then we can get this uh, complete response throughout the spectrum. Or, or else we can utilize a different lamp as we did here. So this you can fabricate. Obviously, there are some Indian companies like uh, they are building uh, the setup, uh, this custom made setup in India. Also, it is not like imported uh, some uh, instrument you need to buy. So we can contact them also. Yes, yeah. uh, how, is that how fine? Like transient response. Is uh, how to obtain transient response. Okay, so for yes. that uh, we need to uh, obviously this turn on and turn off uh, this uh, uh, light source. But uh, yes. since uh, as you have observed also, like our devices are not that uh, uh, good in terms of speed. So we have just simply used this uh, uh, that manual switch to turn on and turn off uh, our this. Uh, uh, this illumination and then observe our this response. But if we have a high speed uh, this uh, uh, response, uh, then perhaps we need to use some other way. We cannot work on uh, this manual uh, way to on and off the lamp. It will not work in that case. So obviously. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So Thank much. you. Thank you, sir, for giving us your precious time. And uh, we hope uh, we will hear from you in our future uh, program like this. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Is there like any more questions? So no, no, no. You can leave this. I think uh, parts have no. Okay. 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 Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you to all the participants for attending this session. So tomorrow we shall meet up again at 11 a.m. Thank you. Bye.